All right, guys, welcome back into another NBA DFS video. My name is Eric Paul Zane with 9 to 5 Sports. Going to be touching on the big 11 game Wednesday night slate. Going to be doing it a little bit differently just because I'm going to be posting this earlier, kind of the night before. Um, what I'm going to be looking at is I'm going to be breaking down the guards, the forwards, the centers, then touching on the core plays, and then showing you guys the first look build uh, for that big slate. I'm trying to do it a little bit earlier just to see if that's going to help the content out a little bit more. So if you guys appreciate that, make sure to give a like and subscribe. So as I'm recording this, it's looking like uh, some of the good plays from tonight's slate uh, with the Golden State Warriors that look like they'd be there might not get there just because the game is a blowout. The New York Knicks are pretty much dominating. Um, and with that, I think we can easily kind of just load up on like Jordan Poole as well. The minutes are not going to be there. So Clay Thompson most likely going to sit on the back end of a back to back. And so we got to see what the news is going to be on Dante DiVincenzo. Is he going to play or not? You know, he has an illness. We'll see if if it was truly an illness. If, if he plays, he's going to be a strong price point play. Probably going to go for over 30 DK points. But at the same time, like we are getting him at almost his ceiling. You know, still going to be a good play. But at the same time, not exactly someone you'd be wanting to go out of your way to play. I think Jordan Poole, who Jordan Poole was right on pace to have a really good game uh, in 30 minutes. I think he put up 35 DK points. So, you know, if he gets that extra uh, run, that final rotation and then he's easily you know would have hit value so i think given the price point uh 8.2 that's not too much um yeah i think he's gonna go out and still have a good game um really it's just a lot of games in nba it's just does the game stay close does the player get his final rotation i'm happy to see that he had a good game so i think he'll still be a stellar play and then we gotta try to find some value with curry wiggins and clay possibly out for the golden state warriors like we gotta find someone else moses pump potentially uh, tied to Rome, potentially like we just got to wait and see which player is going to be in the starting lineup. And that'd be the player that I'd want to go with the most. Uh, Anthony Lamb is probably going to be someone that's going to get some extended run and he'd be a strong price point play. Uh, it's just going to be loaded with a decent amount of value. It seems like for the Golden State Warriors. So that is most likely going to be a starting point for us. And then we might as well just stick with that game. I still think Kyrie Irving is priced a little bit too cheap. You know, Kyrie's recent production has been great, you know, averaging over 34 minutes per game. Uh, consistently going over 40 DK points and then given the price point, you know, that's what we want. And so I love that consistency. I love the matchup, obviously, with the Golden State Warriors. Um, should be easy, an easy game for him. So I think he's so going to be someone I'm trying to go out of my way to play just on the slate. Will we be able to afford to fit him into our builds? I think that we will be able to. So we do have to wait and see on news on Marcus Smart. Currently questionable, has a non-COVID illness. And man, it seems like there's a lot of those popping up uh, this year. Uh, We'll see. But uh, if you were to say, I think Malcolm Brogdon at 5.1 would be a great, great play. I would see a slight increase in usage and potentially minutes as well. He already has been some that's been getting around 30 minutes per game. But if we knew that we were going to be locking in around 30 minutes for Malcolm Brogdon, I'd expect that we'd be getting around 30 DK points from him. At least we'd begin like around 25 DK points. It would be a strong and safe play. He'd be someone I'd definitely be going out of my way to play if Marcus Smart is indeed ruled out. So Russ Westbrook is another one of those players that is currently questionable and they are already most likely going to be without Austin Reeves. So that would leave a lot of good value there for the LA Lakers. I think I'd be going with Dennis, uh, still roaming with him, you know, playing over 30 minutes per game now. I think you'd see an increase in usage, but really we'd probably just be loading up on LeBron. Obviously, I'm going to say that for the forward section, but uh, there is going to be some Lakers value there. We would have to wait and see on who's going to step up into that starting lineup. Could be Kendrick Nunn. Um, you know, Lonnie Walker would probably be a decent play. I don't think Patrick Beverly's role would change too much. And then just looking at some other good uh, guard plays on the slate. So I'm actually perfectly fine with going with Jalen Brunson once again. I uh, already mentioned it, but that game with New York versus Golden State tonight was a little bit of a blowout. He didn't get his final run, uh, final rotation, but he still was able to go out and have a good game. Won't have, be 40 DK points, but I think it'll end up being like 35 DK points or so, maybe 32. Uh, uh, but given the price point, still not really adjusted for the recent production that he's had. Now, yes, the matchup is going to be a little bit more difficult, so not as appealing, but still someone that I could see going for 40 DK points, still someone I could see uh, being in a winning GPP or cash lineup, just not as, you know, sexy. And then same thing on that game, you know, Fred Van Fleet, you know, had been someone that had been really on a tear for quite a while and then had a bus game. Okay. Those happen. Had a really poor night shooting. And typically, I like to attack players coming off of a poor night shooting. Just kind of natural regression. I would expect him to have a much better uh, game shooting because, well, he had a poor game shooting the previous night. And obviously, gets a great matchup going against the New York Knicks. And then two more guard plays to touch on. We've got LaMelo Ball. Uh, LaMelo Ball has just been on a tear since he's returned, guys. Uh, we don't really have to worry about the minutes uh, because uh, they've been over 30 each game. Um, 
you know, besides the first game, but averaging, you know, 42 DK points per game. Now, yes, the price point is a little bit high, but I still think we are going to be getting around 40 DK points out of him. Uh, the game with the Clippers is not one that you'd be particularly worried about. Uh, so I think LaMelo Ball firmly going to be in play. And also tack on the fact that Terry Rozier most likely going to sit currently questionable. Uh, that would mean Ball's going to be a much better play. You look at his usage rate with Terry Rozier out the court. LaMelo Ball has a 32% usage rate. And then also averages 52 DK or fantasy points on average per 36. So he'd be someone that would also be a very appealing play. Uh, Kelly Oubre also a decent play uh, by that same manner as well. And then lastly, looking at Shy. Now I feel like Shy is going to be priced up a little bit too much, uh, but Josh Giddy might sit. And that's that's what this play would be predicated on is Josh Giddy sitting. If he sits, Shy would still be a good play. And man, Shy ruined my video uh, two nights ago uh, by being active. Uh, that's like the second time this year where... It was looking like it'd be a Dort night and Dort day and Shy because Shy and Giddy were out and then Shy was active and kind of ruined that. Uh, but yes, yeah, so if he's going to be active again and Giddy's going to be out again, uh, I do expect Shy to go for 50 DK points again. Obviously, Portland and OKC are playing each other again. Uh, he went for 52 DK points against them, but not exactly like a core core play. Just would be a good play. Could seem like really going off. Now let's go ahead and get into the forwards. I already mentioned some of the Golden State Warriors like Dante and whatnot, uh, Lamb potentially. Like those are going to be okay plays that we could potentially look at. Both the Bogdanoviches, you know, are firmly in play. Uh, Detroit's is going to be a little bit better. Um, you know, had been someone that's been putting up 30 or so DK points. Not exactly a must play at all by any means, but, you know, could be someone that's a decent play. If we get news that Giddy sits, and I think Aaron Wiggins is still a little bit too cheap for a guy that's been averaging, you know, over 20 minutes the past four games and been averaging over 20 DK points. Now, obviously, there's going to be better value that opens up throughout the day, but maybe it's just someone you put in there for now. And then, you know, as the day progresses, you kind of know that you're going to plug in a different value price point play. And sure, if there isn't somehow on a big 11 game slate, then you just just leave him in there uh, knowing that he should be able to get 5x. Another forward that I like kind of still for the OKC Thunder is going to be uh, Kenrick Williams. Uh, one of the players that really didn't see a big uh, drop in production with uh, Shy being active. Saw 29 minutes still, which was great. 32 minutes the previous game before that. 24 and 31 DK. Now this is because it's looking like uh, Robinson Earl is going to sit as well. And that's obviously huge, but we would need to get news and it's looking, all right, he's already ruled out. Baisley's ruled out. Okay. So that's good. So yes, Williams is going to be a strong price point play. Probably going to go for around 25 DK points. Uh, kind of given his price point, he is someone that I'm trying to go out of my way to play as it sits right now. Uh, obviously almost 24 hours before lineup lock. Do you want to touch on Anthony Edwards as well? Anthony Edwards would be a spectacular play if Rudy Gobert is ruled out once again. He has been on a tear 38 minutes the last two games, over 60 DK points in both of those games. If you look at his previous game, against OKC 48 DK points like it would just be tough not to love him as a play once again sure the price is starting to get there a little bit but he literally just went for 65 DK points against Dallas like he didn't shoot the ball particularly well so yeah he'd be a play that I think we'd be trying to go out of our way to play uh if Rudy Gobert is indeed ruled out I do think Kawhi Leonard at 7.9 especially going against Charlotte is going to be a very interesting uh, GPP play a very strong GPP play I think at that maybe not a cash play but I think he'd be someone we'd firmly want to be looking at in GPP uh, given the price point, especially if Paul George is out, uh, the recent production is why I like. Obviously, a small sample size between the last three games, but 51, 36, and 47 DK points. That is obviously appealing to me. Uh, I would love to try to capture that upshot upside in a great matchup and then kind of like Aaron Wiggins where if we don't get better value I could see maybe potentially playing Kevin Love who you know last two games been playing a little bit more I guess just against Utah a little bit more you know he's a DK point per minute player you know if he can get 20 minutes that's fine um gets hot shooting the basketball which he hasn't been able to do recently you know he could get to 20 DK points the, once again like I want to find better value and there will be better value as this slate goes on so now we're moving on to the, the center's option Obviously, there's not as many great forward plays just yet. And I will touch on LeBron. Don't worry, guys. That's coming in the core play section. Uh, looking at the center. We'll start with Joel Embiid. Yes, highest price center on the site beside Giannis. Um, you know, just been a stud. It, it's tough not to like someone that could easily go for 70 DK points, 60 DK points. Uh, Detroit's going to be a much better matchup than Toronto as well. Uh, it just wouldn't be shocking to see him, you know, have another great game. Averaging 57 DK points on the season uh, gets a matchup that you're not really worried about. You know, he's definitely someone we're going to want some pieces of in GBPs. And then looking at Minnesota, obviously Cat is still going to be out. Rudy Gobert currently questionable. If he sits, then you would just be locking in now. As Reed once again, I feel like I've said this uh, every slate uh, for the past three slates, and 
obviously the game against Chicago it didn't work out because well he got injured but man he'd be tough to pass up on even at 5.9 he's a DK point per minute player uh, as long as the mints are there he should easily be able to get the 30 DK points with the upside to go for obviously 50 plus DK points. Um, yeah, just a strong, strong play. And right now I'm operating under the assumption that uh, Rudy Gobert is going to sit. If Rudy Gobert plays, I think he would be a strong price point play as well. I would see him going for around 40 DK points. So now getting back into Mitchell Robinson, he was one point shy of a double double against the Golden State Warriors. Once again, didn't get that final rotation. Had he done that, uh, he, I think he would have really went off. But that's very nice because we still get him at 5.1 and cheap price tag. Now, yes, the matchup with Toronto isn't perfect. But, you know, he's been getting a decent amount of run lately, you know, 30 minutes, averaging well over 25 DK points per game over the last uh, six games now, I think he's still going to be a strong price point play. Now, obviously, we have to see what happens on the back end of a back-to-back if anyone's going to be out. But as it sets right now, I think Mitchell Robinson is going to be a strong price point play with, you know, great GPP upside. So... The OKC Thunder are a team that you want to attack uh, via the center position, and we have to see if Yusef is going to sit or not. Currently questionable, okay? If he sits, we'd be looking at Drew Ebanks, Eubanks, um, but we would have to see if he's going to be active, okay? He's currently questionable, but listed as probable. You just never know in NBA DFS, uh, but if he plays... You know, probably going to get at least 20 minutes. If he gets 20 minutes, should be able to get to 25 DK points. If he gets more minutes than that, could go for 30 DK points. Uh, is priced up a little bit, but given the matchup, given the projected minutes, like I think he'd be a strong price point play for us on this slate. Wish he was a little bit cheaper, uh, but that might keep his ownership down. And then from there, Thomas Bryant still going to be a good play. Now, the biggest issue with him is the game needs to stay close. Like the last um, two of the, the last three games, the games have not stayed close. And he's still been able to hit value, but we want the game to stay close so that we can almost lock in 30 plus DK points which obviously we want because that's going to mean he's going to get 30 plus minutes. If the game stays close, and obviously I'll look at the Vegas spreads more tomorrow, but if the game stays close, then yes, he's going to be a strong price point play, probably going to get 30 DK points. Still not priced up enough, though, I don't think, with Anthony Davis off the court. Do you want to call it Vucevic, too, going against Atlanta? Feels like he's just too cheap. Okay, sure, the last game against Atlanta, only 29 DK points, and that, that's what you don't like. Uh, but he is someone that could easily go for 40-plus DK points, and it just wouldn't be shocking. Um, it, it's definitely a GPP-only play, but at the same time, could easily get a double-double, could easily go for 40 DK points at a cheap price tag. You know, I don't mind that. And this might be a game that I end up trying to stack. Chicago versus Atlanta. We'll see more as the day progresses tomorrow. And then we know that we want to attack a center against Charlotte. Like we do, okay, so we want to attack a center against Charlotte. If Zubak plays, then he's in a smash spot. Even if he's only going to play around 25 minutes or so, still should be in a sp smash spot, okay? Even 20 minutes or so. We need to get news on that because that could really shift the whole dynamic of the site. Now, maybe someone like Robert Covington becomes a good value play. Didn't play in their last game, okay? Um, but if he can get 20 minutes in this game, obviously against Charlotte, that'd be in uh, intriguing. Now, Brown did play in the last game, but only four minutes. So we just got to wait and see what the news is uh, going to be there for the Clippers. Now let's go ahead and get into the core play section. I was kind of saving LeBron for this section. Now he's currently questionable, but if we get news that, um, let's say it's probable, if we get news that Westbrook is going to sit as well on top of Anthony Davis saying, then he even becomes a more spectacular play. Now, I guess the worry once again would be, hey, does the game blow out? That would be a worry. But we can see games that LeBron has played in recently. They haven't really been blowout. In games with Anthony Davis off the court, LeBron is averaging over 50 fantasy points per game, has a high usage rate as well. You know, 9.9 .9 is a cheap price tag for him, especially in the matchup with the Kings. That should be a higher scoring game. LeBron's going to be someone I'm trying to go out of my way to play. So so just kind of recapping the core play section now, I think, you know, obviously Anthony Edwards, if Rudy Gobert is indeed ruled out, then he is someone that we are looking to play. You know, two short games of over 60 DK points. That's highly appealing. Uh, same thing with Naz Reed. Uh, two games that he's finished fully with Rudy Gobert out, 50 and 52 DK points. So obviously he'd be someone that you'd be looking to play. Uh, Kawhi Leonard as well. I just like the GPP upside going against Charlotte. Uh, could easily go for 45 DK points, 40 DK points at 7.9. That's certainly something that you would like as well. Also Kyrie against the Golden State Warriors. I think we are going to be locking in 40 DK points with the upside to go for 50 DK points. The question is who's going to be active for the Golden State Warriors. That's going to be my biggest worry. Uh, but he should be a, a very safe play, but also has the upside to really go out and break the slate. And then as well, I do like Jordan Poole. Uh, once again, we just need this game to stay close, but Jordan Poole could easily go for 50 DK points in this matchup with Brooklyn. And if it does stay close, it's probably be be probably going to be because he is going off. So that is another strong play that I like. So let's go ahead and give you guys a first look build. So obviously this isn't going to work. Going to have to try to figure out where I want to, you know, 
make some lineup changes. For now, I'm going to go off of LaMelo Ball. And I guess for the sake of a build, we'll say Gobert is going to play. Trying to give a first look build. Uh, that'll still hold up, you know, even with injury news is pretty much what I'm trying to do. So maybe we go off of Drew as well. That's the difficult part, guys. That's the most difficult part of providing NBA DFS content. Injury news shifts the slate so much. Uh, the amount of times where I produced a video and then like 30 minutes later, there's an injury situation that changes the dynamic of the slate. It's so frustrating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the uh, projected value in there for the Golden State Warriors, because I think that's going to be the route that we are kind of forced to do. So maybe Lamb as well. Then we'll go Bryant. Once again, I was, I'm trying to make a build that's not specifically predicated on injury news. I, I want to go Dante, honestly. <laughs> we'll go Lamb here. Can, can Lamb fit as a guard? Yeah. No. Can Kawhi? No. This is, this is definitely like a little dead price point range here especially because I, I'm expecting Clay to sit. Um, I wouldn't mind if we could get up to Brunson. All right, let's 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 go down from Kyrie. Let's go with Brunson. Van Fleet, Poole. And I, this sort of works, sort of. Obviously, as the day progresses, we'll be able to put out a little bit of a better build. But that's all I have for you guys for this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the coverage. If you did, give a like and subscribe. Uh, let me know if you like this style or if you're just... Obviously, it's more difficult on a, on a big slate, for one, and obviously more difficult producing it way before lineup lock, you know, the night before. But... I think it is good information. And obviously we do have enough news to go off of to kind of drill down what our player pool would look like. So if you guys enjoyed the coverage, make sure to give a like and subscribe. All right, let's have a good slate. And as always, let's keep cashing.